All right, it's bathing suit season. Some of you may like that idea, some of you may not. Women are not the only ones, by the way, who openly struggle with body image. Men are just as insecure and self-conscious about their own... I hate to call them flaws because I think that we do have to get a little real here and realize that we're not all born to fit into a size 2 or a size 40. But a study published in the journal Body Image found that only 28% of men say that they're extremely satisfied with their appearance. Uh, joining me now is Lori Osachi. She's owner of the Body Image Counseling Center. Hey, good morning to you, Lori. Always good to see you. And this is an important interview. I know we do it during this time of year in particular because it is warm. A lot of people are headed to the beach, you know, and there is this certain self-consciousness. I mean, I, I, I feel it. Everybody feels it. And, you know, how do you, are there certain warning signs that we can sort of point out to our viewer and, and also kind of give them some solutions? Right. At this time of year, a lot of my clients come in and tell me it's surfing season or bathing yeah. suit season, or I don't want to put on a pair of shorts, or I don't want to have a, a sleeveless dress on. And the signs, you know, I think, unfortunately, we live in a society that makes us feel bad about our bodies a lot. We're You're bombarded so right. with so many images of perfect models, and they're even airbrushed. So they are not, that's not what they really look like. So I think we all have some of that, unfortunately, but when it becomes a real problem is there are people that have not gone to the beach in years because they won't put on a bathing suit or won't go in the water. And that's really sad. If you love the water and love being outside, why would you let that, you know, get in your way? And it can lead to depression. It can lead to maybe you've decided that, you know, if there are certain social, you know, there's a lot of outdoor barbecues and people can get in the pool, particularly if you're bringing your exactly. kids. So families are there and you're like, no, I'm not going to go. And you, if you kind of wall yourself up during the summer months, you know, it's hard to stay happy. Right, and even if in its extreme, it can lead to eating disorders. You know, that's a, a, one of the symptoms of having an eating disorder. But that's part of when any kind of issue becomes a problem. It's when it interferes with your life and the things you would normally do. And that's actually part of the solution is to decide to fight and say, I'm not going to let these negative feelings about myself get in the way of my life experiences. I'm not going to watch my life go by. All right, so if you're trying to kind of figure out if this applies a little bit to you, another thought is do you have clothes of different sizes in your closet and, and you hold on to the smaller ones in hopes that you'll some someday fit into them I think we're probably all guilty of that you know I think the important thing first of all and this is a little complicated but to learn how to eat intuitively so you're not going up and down in yeah. size and yo-yo dieting your whole life which is not healthy studies actually show that it's healthier to be of a higher weight rather than yo-yo diet your whole life that wreaks havoc upon you. Yeah. So you want to stay that, you know, learn how to stay that size without dieting. But once you have, let go of those clothes because they just make you feel bad. Give them away. Donate them to someone who can use them. So, you know, I, I keep saying, you know, kind of let's get real here. Let's just be honest. Um, the, basically, you know, the vast majority of the public, women are a size, not, not a, size two, not a size four, but it's typically... A 12. A 12. A typical women's size is a 12 in America. Okay, so keep that in mind. And then for men, you know, I mean, we see these, you know, these abs of steel and, you know, these fantastic ph physiques, but not everyone's like that. And it doesn't mean that they're unhealthy if they're not. No, it doesn't. A lot of the people, you know, who are that thin are starving to get there or are taking drugs to get there. Not all, but some. We come in a range of shapes and sizes, just genetically. So um, what are, you know, you look in the mirror and you see what maybe sometimes what you want to see and not what re you really see, perhaps. What are some ways that you can kind of overcome that anxiety? So you can kind of put your shoulders back a little bit when you're walking your bathing suit and say, hey, you know what? I work. I'm a full-time mom. I don't have time to spend three hours in the gym. That's true. I mean, I think that really the funny thing is if you look around, I'm sure everyone knows somebody who's maybe a larger size that feels great about themselves. So it's not the body. It's what goes on up here. And so that's where you have to start. You have to start by changing those negative thoughts and not letting yourself say negative things in the mirror to yourself. That's something, you know, a little piece of advice that I give that keep in mind how you talk to yourself in the mirror every morning really write it down and if you're saying I look fat my thighs look bad my you know my hair looks terrible you're telling yourself you're ugly every day so I tell people just jump in front and say something positive like I'm an awesome mom or you know I I got a great college degree or you know I'm I'm a kind person or I love I love my butt or you know yeah, right right and I think I think that it's important that you remember that the things that you maybe say about yourself and you don't realize your kids are around you remember that they are listening mm -hmm. because you don't want to, them to somehow develop some kind of complex and I think the 
the other point that we've talked about for for many many years also is is you know uh, we have to be honest with ourselves but this isn't about how much a scale tells you you weigh but about just making sure that you're living a healthy lifestyle and that may not mean that you are a size four or a six That's right. you know I mean I struggle with this with one of my children who eats very very healthy and gets great exercise but you know th this child is never going to be a, a, a skinny little child just is what it is right that's our genetics yeah. you yeah. know that and and our society unfortunately tells little girls and increasingly little yeah. boys that if they're not super skin skinny or buff or for boys uh, it's the it's the um, V shape, yeah. the broad shoulders and thin waist, mm -hmm. that they're ugly. And what we have to do is say, there are some people that you can be healthy and beautiful at this Absolutely. size. And I think that advertisers are starting to change that a little, show more diverse yeah. body sizes, but we have a long way to go. Well, we will keep helping everybody at home feel better, I hope, about themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lori, for being here. I appreciate it. And, you know, if you struggle with body image issues, check out the self-help program that Lori started. It's text to be well. Just text the be healthy, the words be healthy, to 44222 or visit www.texttobewell.com to learn more.